Hello everyone. Welcome to my tutorial on pin washing. Uh, this tutorial was requested by a subscriber I have called Jungle Lands. And um, since I was building and building and building this King Tiger, um, I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to show a few steps of the webbing process I use. Um, which starts uh, basically with this um, step, which is pin washing, like I said. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use a um, dark yellow and dark brown washers from AK Interactive. But this also could be perfectly achieved with any enamel uh, color and artist white spirit. And, you know, it can achieve as, as good results as with these products. So, uh, let me just show you what I've done. I've done the, the entire hull. And uh, this is a good way to get some volume, uh, some shadow, and um, getting uh, some 3D effects. It's just um, a great way to also um, bring out the detail and start the weathering process. Now, I hope you like this and let's get on with this uh, tutorial. So let's start with the pin washing. So the first thing I want to tell you is I'm going to use this turret as an example because doing the whole tank would have been uh, just too, too long and it's a very simple technique. It does not need to be uh, shown all throughout the tank. I think this uh, simple turret will be good enough for me to show you how I did things. So um, another thing I want to tell you about is I always use uh, two different cups with white spirit. Uh, you don't need too much of it. It's just a very sparse uh, container, but you need to. Uh, the reason being uh, you're going to use one to uh, you know use the uh, clean uh, white spirit to apply on the surface. Uh, with a moist brush and then the other one to clean the brush every time you need. So I always always use two containers for that um, for that reason. Another thing is the set of brushes I'm going to use. I'm going to use a flat wide brush, um, a flat smaller brush, number two, and also a number two round brush uh, with a um, in this case, it's a, it's a sable, it's a sable uh, brush, but it's a used one, and it's getting old. Um, so for certain things, it's not useful anymore. But for this, it's just perfect. It's really precise, really accurate, and allows you to have more control. But you can do this with any synthetic brush, uh, as long as it's reasonably good. And um, I would recommend you uh, for you to use this combination uh, if you uh, feel comfortable with it. So. Uh, Let's start. First of all, I'm going to start with a dark brown. I'm going to do the details on top of the turret. Remember to shake these products very well. The pigment has a tendency to set on the bottom and it's very, very fast. So even sometimes amidst the application on the model, you should just close the lid again and um, shake them again. Now. As you can see, this is a very dark color. This is a very dark brown color. Uh, and this is perfect because this is a tritonal camo um, turret and it's got a modulation uh, all over it. Um, even the, the, the camo, uh, which was sprayed, um, is modulated as you can see, for example, here. It's a darker, medium and lighter tones and here, for example, as well. And this uh, will allow it to have um, a better um, way to uh, uh, show the volumetric uh, shape of this turret, which I just love. I mean, I think it's a very beautiful turret uh, and probably uh, the best looking of the King Tiger's turrets. Um, so uh, I want to uh, have a very dark color to provide some contrast and, you know, really cut out the shapes and details. Now, don't be afraid um, to uh, apply washes twice if you need, if you feel the need to do it. And that will probably be needed in a few of the details we have here. The reason being 
that um, some of the details are really hard to pick out at first and we should go easier or lighter first and then uh, repeat the process after dried and um, just so that it just you know enough or if you just get more control so let's go so the first thing I do is to apply a moist flat white brush on the surface I want to pick out and then use the round brush to start depositing the paint where I want it. All you have to do is touch the corners and the washes will flow very, very well. Because you have pre-wetted this surface with the white, uh, white spirit and it allows you to flow all of that wash. Don't be scared if you do mess up a bit because you'll always be able to go back and correct any problems you you had before it's completely dried. Just remember to pick up all the details. Leave as little marks as you can get, but don't be afraid if you leave some marks. Now, I understand that this can be a bit scary or even uh, have the appearance of being too overwhelming because it's, it's very detailed. It takes a long time or a longer time than, let's say, for example, um, a, uh, like a sludge wash. The difference is you'll not you'll will not be applying pigment on any other part of this surface. That allows you to have more control and you know dictate your look that you want on your model. Personally, I'm a fan of this technique. I think it works pretty well. It allows me to apply other weathering stages without overwhelming the model too much. Well, hopefully at least. So next we go to another portion of the turret sometimes you have to be a little bit more generous so don't be afraid drop some of that white spirit there just slowly and easy and very very gently go and apply the white spirit Don't press the brush, just let it let it flow, let it do its work. Now, in this case I'm using the dark brown straight from the bottle. And there's a good reason for that. I want this to be a very contrasting uh, wash. I want these features to be very, very uh, um, stark in this uh, in this model. The reason for that is I'm not going to apply uh, huge amounts of um, weathering, um, further weathering on this model, so I want it to be, you know, uh, very well um, contrasted and uh, depicted, so I don't want to be um, too cheap on this. I want to go and apply generous amounts of uh, washes. Of course I'll proceed and have uh, another layer of oils and all that but mainly I just want to um, I want all of these features and details to figure out prominently throughout the model. Now as you can see we sort of make, made a mistake here and there. There's no worry about that. There's no problem. You can always go back and clean it later so don't worry about it just keep keep adding your washes slowly patiently let it flow let it go let it do its job and everything will be easier to control with later
So as you can see, it's now completely uh, pin washed, the top of the turret. And now, before it dries for too long, we're going to correct the mistakes we made with this flat yet uh, small brush. We dip it on the uh, clean uh, white spirit, then we dry it in our um, paper towel, and then we start removing the bits that we don't want to see. Just for example, the top of this cover here. And don't be afraid to take it all out if you want to. If it doesn't look good, doesn't don't worry. Just go back and repeat the process. Take your time. The benefits of this technique is you'll have a very clean wash applied where you want it and not where it went just for it, by accident. Control, in my opinion, is one of the most important things of weathering your vehicles. Sorry, your models. Even if it's already dried, it can still go back and take whatever you Whatever wash you applied. Another way to, if you just want to add or change a detail, this is also a very good brush just to apply clean white spirits and uh, just a little bit of the or a little detail that you want to uh, pin wash and then just drop the wash on that little detail and make it stick out again don't be afraid if you don't do it perfectly because you can always go back and clean it you need not fear your mistakes. So there you go, the top of the turret is now washed. Now, my advice is, uh, once one of the stages is done, just leave it to dry. Uh, I don't advise the use of a uh, hair dryer because the washers need to set and not be rushed in their, uh, when they're drying, or at least I've never have had you know really good experiences with that. So just let it be, let it set, and uh, as soon as it's dried, uh, you'll go back and fix or. Uh, add whatever washes you think uh, you need. Um, so uh, see you when it's uh, when it's dry, so we can uh, make the corrections and proceed with the rest of the pin washing. So now I'm going to show you uh, what we did in the first uh, part of this tutorial. Uh, after it's dried, it's, it's now completely dried, and we're now going to pick up a few details that got, you know, um, somewhat um, faded in the first attempt or in the first pass that we did. Uh, this um, is usually done uh, exactly to pick up the details that are, you know, less to your liking, and I usually do this to you know, uh, increase the contrast in a few elements um, just to make them uh, pop up a little bit more. So, the same way we just, you know, did before. Dab a bit of a white spirit, just 
slowly and gently go through the area that you want to pick up again and then shake it shake your washes and start picking up the areas that you want to increase the contrast of. In this case I'm going to do this door here, this hatch, I'm sorry, a little bit more. And next I'm going to do this periscope port here. And then we will correct any uh, problems that we want to have, such as these uh, drop points here. So any details that failed your first pass can be um, uh, redone afterwards and corrected just like in the same like in the same fashion that you did the previous time. Thus getting a more uh, striking result and more of a contrast between details and even having different sorts of depth to this uh, wash and to the overall look of your tank. Now for the side hull on this case on the sides of the sorry so the sides of the turret uh, as you can see it's got this um, zimmered uh, um, layer on it and because zimmered's highly dense on detail uh, I don't want to use the same type of uh, wash that we've been using for pick, pick, picking up individual details that was a dark brown wash and we're now going to switch to dark yellow wash which is a lighter uh, wash color as you can see here it doesn't seem too striking but it's it's enough and we're not going to use it straight out of the bottle just the way you use this one we're going to dilute it a little bit and we're going to apply it liberally on the side of the turret, on the sides of the turret, should I say, um, and thus get a softer wash, but with a better, um, uh, I shall say, um, result for this uh, zimmered area, which I'm going to apply it. after our surface is wet, let's take this uh, flat uh, small brush, dip it in the wash, and the way I do it is I apply it quite liberally, don't be afraid. quite liberally as you can see it's picking up the surface detail already and then we're going to use our damp brush the large one to take the excess off leaving it still with a bit of uh, wash but a diluted one And if you feel that this is too much, it's very easy to go in and uh, just absorb whatever uh, uh, wash is too dark. Just try and do it evenly. If you want to see the difference between one, the sides of the turret, and the other one, you can see here that this side is washed. It's got a little bit more contrast on it. Next, while the surface is still wet, 
I'm going to turn to the dark brown wash again. I'm going to uh, pick out the details with it. Now I'm going to start first with uh, these uh, hangers for the extra track links. And don't worry if your wash goes to the sides. It doesn't really matter. As long as you pick out the details on it, it's just it will fulfill its shadowing function. Um, and allow you to have a bit more contrast between the parts uh, that are welded to the turret and the zimmerit. So don't worry about it getting into the uh, nearby uh, zimmerit. It kind of serves our purpose anyway. So that the other part of the, the turret in the back side holders, same thing. And you can now see the detail popping out. Now, still with the same color, I'm going to apply this um, on these patches of red oxide primer that are showing through the zimmer. I'm going to apply bits of the same wash so they can um, become just a little bit darker and shadowy, kind of popping up the volume on the zimmer. and darkening a bit of that uh, purposefully uh, light red oxide color. Once again, you can go in and retrieve or take back the excess wash with your brush. As long as you uh, use your paper towel to absorb part of it, once it's on the brush, and after the brush is dry, it acts like a sponge and just takes out the excess out of the areas. And as you can see here, you have the zimmered portion of this uh, turret washed, but not too much because, like I said, it's going to get uh, too busy if I go in with a very dark wash on the zimmered. Uh, but if I just do a light wash on the zimmer and then pick, up, pick out the details, it'll just look fine in my opinion. Um, as an example, I can show you what I've done with the hull, which was exactly this technique. So as you can see here, you have darker areas with dark brown wash and the dark yellow wash was used on this zimmer surface detail. Uh, with the intention of leaving it a bit lighter. Um, however, these details such as this uh, gun port were, um, you know, uh, picked on with the dark brown and also the uh, red oxide primer. So this was the basics on pin washing. Of course, even if, I know this is a very basic technique but it will allow your models to be really utterly um, um, detailed because it just simply picks out the uh, detail that usually uh, you know uh, if you don't wash your model uh, your model will look a little bit more dull so this will pick up the details extra um, uh, it will be, they will become extra visible and that's what we want to achieve here because we want this model to look stark or you know it looks uh, to look better once it's uh, washed and this also is the, the groundwork for our weathering so uh, be, be aware of that and this you know wash serves a very very important function and uh, once again I'm going to show you uh, this is the finished wash and uh, side of the turret and this is the, the part of the turret without the wash so you can clearly see the differences here.